Okay. Uh, oop, wait, wait, wait. I gotta hit the, 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 yes, there we go. I am on camera. I'm live. Hello. Hello, viewing audience. Oh, hey, thanks for following. Lernu was here. Uh, people follow when I'm not streaming, and I always feel bad because I can't, like, thank them for it, but, like, that's, what am I to do? <laughs> they, they, they decided um. to do it when they did. Um, I don't know what's up with this camera. That's true. <laughs> I don't know what it is with this camera, but every time I like leave and come back, it feels like it's moved to a different spot. I don't. I'm gonna have to figure it out. Eh. Okay, how are you doing, Egan? I'm okay. Pretty tired. I worked an extra day this week, so I'm just I'm feeling that. But I've been working on a new project. Nice. It's been a lot of fun. Can you talk about it, so. or is it still too early? Uh, I can kind of talk about it. It's pretty vague. I don't know. It's like hard to describe because, like, essentially, it's somewhere between a comic book and an art book, but it's more a statement about subjective reality <laughs> than anything. So, uh, of course, it's coming. It's it's coming together. But it's been fun. It's just like a lot of like detail work, which is my like favorite thing to do. So nice. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. I need to, I feel like I should get some kind of a project going, but at the same time, work has been so busy that I feel like that'd probably be a bad idea, honestly. Yeah, understandable. I mean, this project is kind of like me finally being like, okay, I just like, screw it. I have to want to make art. I need to make art. And like, that's what I want to do, so... Yeah, exactly. That, that's always my sticking thing with like streaming and YouTube. It's like I enjoy streaming and I I enjoy making stuff for YouTube, but I never feel like I'm saying much with it. It's all it's all pretty low effort content, so I feel like I should just I should put more work into it and make something uh for lack of a better word that I'm just more proud of. I don't know. All right. Oh. Let's see. I've got 3 games Slate it up. Let's play some Draftosaurus. I think we played this once before. I think we did, yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty easy. You just have to. You just get a handful of dinosaurs, and you gotta place them on your board for the best score. And if you hover over any part, it'll tell you what it is. Uh, T Rexes. Oh yeah. Any like any time you have a T Rex in one, you get one additional point. But that's just so if you have multiple T Rexes, you still only get the one point. Um, and at any point, you can put them into the river. That's like a catch all. Uh, but be careful because one of the sides of the die is like you have to place it in a pen that doesn't have a T Rex, so you can kind of choke yourself off that way. So mm. let's go. Let's go to the game. All right. I'm here. I'm ready. Where am I going to go with this? Uh, I think usually the, the bog of differences, the meadow of differences, is a good starting point. What are the names? I, I've, I've played this so much I've totally forgotten the names. The Forest of Sameness. King of the Jungle. Oh, discarded dino. Oh, that must be a two-player specific thing. Uh, let's, let's get rid of a T-Rex. Oh, yeah. I think I remember this from the last time we played. Goodbye. All right. And then I'm going to put a T-Rex in the Woody Trio. Discard another T-Rex. <laughs> I'm going to make it a T-Rex slim game. <laughs> nice. All right, I pl I placed my king of the jungle. I'm 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 going in on yellow. I think I can have the most yellow. Oh, hello. So there. Hello. Okay. Hang on. Take your time. I really want to get this game physically, but looking at prices, they're all like 35 bucks. And it's like, it's a really fun game. I play it a lot on here, but like, 
just end up with a bunch of wooden dinos. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth 35 bucks. I mean, they're pretty cute dinos, though. They are pretty cute dinos. I have, um... I have a copy of Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, which also has a ton of great little wooden dinos. They're, like, itsy-bitsy. Like, you practically need, like, tweezers uh, to use them. That game's really fun. I, I, I wonder if it's on, like, this or Tabletopia. <sighs> Wait, what's it called? Sorry. Tiny yeah. Epic Dinosaurs. It's there's a series called Tiny Epic Blank. So it's basically games that are like in really small boxes with really small pieces but are still like really deep strategic games. Um Okay. And so that's that's the only one I have, but it's really really fun. I like it a lot and it's just got a bunch of dinos, which is always always a plus. I love a dino around here. I'm gonna discard this Parasolophus. I think that is. <laughs> Man, I'm really filling out the meadow of differences. I'm gonna run out of space if I keep doing that. Ugh. Oh, he went for T Rexes in the Forest of Sameness. That's pretty risky. Is it? It's pretty risky. It's because, like I said, you only get um, one extra point for the T-Rexes, and there are not that many, especially now that I've discarded two of them. <laughs> cool. I mean, whatever. I love I, you, Learn. I will, to be fair, I did not see that you were doing that, but I, that probably would have not changed my decision. <laughs> Well, yeah, you're trying to win a game. Strategically sound. They have, in that bottom left, the Prairie of Love. I almost never go in on that because, for whatever reason, it's it's really hard to get pairs of dinos into there. You don't score if you don't have a full pair. I already have a full pair in there. Well, aren't you special? Well, I just... The other one is a solitary island, because that one just makes me sad. You only get points if you don't put any of that other... that type of dino anywhere else on your island. It is sad, but... Uh, a pen that doesn't have a T-Rex. Ah, dang it, this is what I was worried about. Um, well, do I need to... Mm. Yeah, yeah, that seems like the way to go. I will discard a T-Rex. <laughs> I woke up with the um, song. What is it? Oh. I woke up with a song stuck in my head. What was it? Trying to say. Whoa, excuse me, that's not what I wanted to do, but I guess that's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's I Think I Love You by the Magic Family. It's that's a great radio station on Spotify. What is it? Um the Partridge Family's I Think I Love You. Oh, okay. But then I listened to a bunch of the covers of it too. Um like right. Tenacious D cover of it that's pretty fun. Oh, okay. Which I thought that's what I was listening to, but it was actually, I, like, ended up also listening to some other weird song. Oh, damn, darn it, I messed up the solitary pen thing. Oh, well. You can swear if you want to. I try and keep it, like, PG-13-ish, but I don't, I'm not very, like, strict about it. Okay. That's good. It's too much work. I tried for a time to be like fully clean, and it's just like I can't. I can't go for two hours without like letting something slip. It's really hard. I think I've also like said fuck at least once on stream, so it's fine. It's yeah. too late now. Oh, oh, we're scoring. What do we get? <laughs> I did really poorly. I got nothing oh, I in the bottom I two. Did... Who won? 
Who won? I win! You did, you did. How much did I win by? Only four. That wasn't too bad. Yeah, I did better than I thought I did. It was that, uh, the love one that really saved my butt. Yeah, I never have much luck with that one. I usually go hard on the forest of sameness, and I always make sure to have a king of the jungle in there. Oh, hey, and I got, that was my 50th victory on Board Game Arena in total. Oh, congratulations. I'm surprised I haven't had more. I, I play this all the time. I think, how many do I have? I think I have nine tables going right now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think this is the ninth table. I got like Puerto Rico, City of the Big Shoulders, Couple Skull, Beyond the Sun, Lost Cities, which were uh, a couple of Lost Cities. I forgot about the other one. This is like my, I have another game of Draftosaurus going on too. I, I, I pay for the premium, okay. so I may as well use it. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. There was some game that you and I were playing for like a pretty long while, and then I decided to play it with... Oh, it's the that housing one. You know what I'm talking about? Housing? You have to like set up the... It's like a real estate game. Oh, welcome to... Welcome to. I was playing that with strangers, and I kept like wiping the board with them, and then I was like, "This is too boring. <laughs> it's too easy." Wow! Wow! Double brag. Yeah, I haven't played Welcome to in a while. I used to have like two or three games of it going at a time, but I don't know. I tried out. They I have Welcome so to uh, Welcome to Vegas as well on here, which is like totally different. Um. <laughs> So I was trying that out, but I didn't like it as much. Hmm. Uh, maybe I will go in on the Prairie of Love this time. Nah, I'm too much of a weenie. I'm going for the the usual Forest of Sameness. And I'll discard purple. Hmm. Oh, the song. Uh, that I think. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I don't like this discarded dino situation. Yeah, I'm usually playing like four player games where you don't have to do that. Hmm. Is it like auto discards for you sometimes? Does it? At the last one when there's only two left. I don't oh, know why. Well, yeah. <laughs> if if your choice is obvious, um, thankfully Board Game Arena is just like, okay, well we we can handle that one for you. Yeah, that was silly. I don't know why. Fine. I have half. I only have half a brain right now. I'm not going to apologize for that. No, it's fine. I'm. I'm totally the same. Like between playing a bunch of Sega Genesis games earlier and uh, uh, we watched, we watched the first episode of the new iCarly. Oh yeah, I was gonna start that. It feels obviously. I didn't. It, it feels very very similar in style to the original like one to one the camera work the characters everything um sam didn't return just because jeanette mccurdy did not want to come back and i don't blame her uh but like yeah the only yeah. real difference is that like they're able to have slightly more risque jokes because it's uh it's not on nickelodeon this time But that's like, it's like barely above PG in terms of those. It's the exact same kind of humor. 
Oh, weird. I don't know if I w would like it. Like, I guess I liked the original, but it feels like more like, like time and place, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because the original iCarly was airing way before live streaming was actually much of a thing. Like, you could technically do it, but you had to be very, like, technologically... Um, you had to know, like, a ton about how technology worked, and you had to do weird stuff to even basically, like, convince a computer to do it. Um, you had to basically make your own like program there wasn't an an OBS or anything like that we have today uh so it, it's fun watching the original just seeing how kind of naive it was about how the internet works mm -hmm. um like especially it, i i'm pretty sure in like the first episode they're like oh i carly went viral because it got like 50,000 hits and it's like that's that's not that much, but like on early YouTube, fifty thousand would have been pretty decent. Mm hmm. Um. Hmm. There we go. Got a couple of greens. Actually, utilizing all the pens for once. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, we also watched an episode of the the sci-fi reality show Face Off, the one about like special effects, monster makeup. Oh yeah, I haven't watched that in a long time. It's um, it. I mean, it's a reality show. It feels like you know America's Next Top Model in like a lot of ways. Like the, even their like judging setup looks almost exactly the same. Um, but like there is some really cool stuff that they end up doing in there. Like, uh, uh, it, it's interesting just seeing, like, how many of them can work well under pressure versus how many of them are actually pretty, pretty talented at what they're doing. Um, yeah, it, it's also fun because it was, like, screen recorded off of uh, somebody's, like, DVR. So it, uh, like, um, in the corner, it's got the coming up next, being human. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, on one Ew. hand, that stuff always seemed annoying, but now it's like almost nostalgic. Ah! One point. One point. Oh, yeah, my sound is on. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I kind of miss, like, actual TV sometimes. Yeah. There is a nostalgia factor. Yeah, I had... Um, for quite a while a uh, sling which is basically like a streaming app that just streams cable um and it's pretty good for that like yeah yeah i knew i know about that somebody was trying to convince me yeah it's like i think like 35 bucks a month for like most of the channels you'd even really want plus like dvr and like uh uh like a ton of different on demand stuff uh, I just kind of stopped because I wasn't... I, I got it mainly to watch AEW, and then I was just way too busy to commit two hours a week. Now four hours a week. They have a second show on Friday now. Um, so I just... I had to, like, cancel for a bit. Mm. But Is it I, expensive? It's it's 35 bucks a month, which it, like, you know, I'm pretty sure is cheap as far as cable goes, but it's pretty pricey as far as streaming services go. Yeah. It's complicated, especially if you're paying for, like, other streaming services. It just doesn't seem net worth it, especially with Netflix being, like, 15 bucks now. Yeah. Yeah, Netflix it keeps raising it by, like, a dollar, like, every few months. Alright, next up. Uh, next up is... The days when you had to wait for the DVDs to arrive. Yeah, now it literally stuff streams while it's also still in theaters. 
which I I, I don't know. understand why they just didn't already do that. I I don't know. It definitely spells bad news for theaters, but All right. This game is Lost Cities by Rainer Knizia. He's like the the golden child of board game designers. He's designed hundreds of games. Um, you know, they they all have pretty high accolades. It's very simple. So we each have a side of the board. And in the middle, the board is discard piles, where you'll discard. So it's kind of like rummy, where you can pick up from the discard pile rather than from the deck. Um, okay. Your goal is to uh, send out an expedition to each of these five different locations. So it's like under the sea, Egypt, the desert, all sorts of places. Uh, you can place cards, which are numbered 2 through 10. And whatever ones you place, you can't ever take them back up. And whatever one you place has to be higher than the last one. So you can go two, three, four, or you could go two, five, seven, however you're able to manage. There are also the little handshake cards, which are the ones that don't have numbers in the corner. And those are wagers. That's you wagering that you are going to do better than I am. And those will just multiply um, whatever you get there. Now, the thing is, every time that you put cards down for an expedition, it costs you 20 points. So no matter how many cards you get in there, it's going to be minus 20 points. Um, so then you want your score at the end is going to be all of the numbers added up times uh, the wagers you put in. So for one wager, it's times two. Two wagers, it'd be times three. So on. You can only put the wagers at the beginning as well before you start putting numbers in. So... Okay. Can't save them for later. On your turn, all you gotta do is you take a card and you either play it to the middle to say, I don't need it, or you play it uh, to your side of the board to s start or continue your expedition, and then you pick up a card either from the middle or from the deck, and we just go until the deck is empty and then add up all of our score. So, I'm gonna start by playing this blue tube. I'm gonna... Yeah, so when you click it, it'll have arrows pointing up and arrows pointing down. Down is to play it to your expedition, up is to discard it to the middle. Alright. I am... Hmm... I am actually going to wager on white. It might be kind of risky, but here Ooh. we go. Hmm. Okay. Uh, ascending, I think, is what I'm looking for. Order um, based on your. So it, you played the two, so I'd have to play something higher than that. No, you don't have to worry about what I played. Um, you can okay. you can see what I played just so you know like what cards have already been played. So there's only one blue two in the whole deck. It has to be ascending from what you've played. So just always you can't play a lower number than what you already have in your expedition. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I am just gonna get rid of that yellow wager. Uh, oh, and also there are three of each color of wager. So there's only one of each colored number, three of each colored wager. Okay. Okay, um... I love a card game. It's been a minute. Yeah. Yeah, card games can be pretty fun. They can be kind of complicated sometimes. Oh, I should see if they, they have yeah. Gin Rummy on here. Have you ever played Gin Rummy? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I've ever, like, exclusively played a game of Rummy, Gin Rummy, like, by exactly the right rules, but... 
I mean, just because I've mostly only played with. They're all yeah. It's always like, do you need to have a certain amount before you put it down? This and that. It like it depends totally on the variation. And anytime you play with someone, it's like I don't know which variation we're playing with right now. So, mm -hmm. um, hmm. I played this. I'm taking that three. Out of here. Uh, Gin Rummy's whole thing is that you basically build up all your sets and runs in your hand, and then once you have enough, when when you think you have more than your opponent has, you just call it and you both reveal your hands and see who actually won. Oh yeah, I think we played Gin Rummy last time that you were in Seattle. Actually, I think you and I played it. Maybe. I don't know. It's been a while. It's been, it's been quite a long time. That was like a few years ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sucks because I like skipped coming to like I skipped coming to Christmas in like 2018 or no 2019 because I had like traveled so much the year before. It just got like really expensive, um, and like Coco would have been here like alone because Corey was out at sea at the time, uh. And then that was the last Christmas that I possibly probably could have visited, so it feels really bad. I know, it does suck, but... Oh, well. To go back and change it now. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm glad that we have the internet during this time, because we can still keep in contact. Which, honestly, we've kept in contact more over the the last year with the pandemic than we did prior to that really no i think being like cooped up me especially like not being able to socialize outside of my house like i don't know really invigorated that because it was like well plus it was i don't know we started playing games online and i think that having that activity really made the difference yeah definitely definitely i'd like to do it more often but like Scheduling can be kind of tricky when it's just you and me. It's like that's not too hard. That's two schedules. But then every time you add another person, it like exponentially gets more difficult. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. This has been nice, though. I appreciate having something to look forward to at the end of the week. For me, it's the end of the week. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Kind of the start of the week for me, uh, just the way that I have like my workout schedule set up. So I did just skip mm -hmm. working out today, because like, um, Corey's schedule has been ridiculous. So he's working like seven days a week, and so that means if I want to get to the gym, I have to walk. And it's just been so hot lately that I woke up this morning at six, and I was just like, I have zero interest in walking half an hour in this heat to the gym. And then working out and then walking back through that. Yeah, that sounds awful. I definitely get that. I was just too tired. I'm probably I haven't been working out very intensely. I've just been doing like Pilates and yoga as per my therapist's uh, request. But um, usually I try to do it before we do this. But I was just like, I'm not even gonna try. I didn't get out of bed till like eleven. Yeah, I need to do more like regular gentle exercise because right now i'm doing like three to four w days of like weight training a week but then i do barely anything on the rest days i should do at least like some cardio mm -hmm. well is that what i want mm. Mm. yeah i miss doing cardio i can't do anything like highly intensive until i I have like a bunch of testing. It's all, uh, I don't want to get into it, yeah. but I'm like stuck doing really low impact stuff right now, which is fine. I don't really, I would, don't think I would feel comfortable doing anything higher impact, but um, yeah, so it would I, be nice. I feel like I should be taking it easier. My ankles have been like getting really sore lately and like my wrists in general have, especially like like both of my wrists just get really um really pained really quick which i think is just carpal tunnel but like 
it's it's rough since most most upper body weight training uses your hands. Mm. Yeah, I hear that. I definitely like I'm seeing a physical therapist because I have a lot of pain in my legs, which they think is sciatica. But I'm like, I we haven't even gotten to my arms, which are probably much worse off than my legs, to be honest. Yeah, that's I'm ignoring it, my pain for too long. Now I'm 31 and can't ignore it anymore. Yeah, I'm like the opposite, where like my legs are much stronger than my upper body, but then my legs. I end up having more joint pain than my upper body by like a long shot. So I have like a billion different like um different like legs compression sleeve things. And even then it's like I kind of should just be off of my feet more, but <laughs> I I end up just like nervously pacing all the time. Yeah, I do a lot of pacing. I know there's nothing I can like do about it because I'm like walking back and f or like because I am on my legs for work, which I'd really like to. Largely, I'd really like to move into a um, uh, move out of working on my feet or move out of working in this industry because it's not doing me. I don't think it's very good for me anymore. My body is definitely feeling it. That's, like, why my arms have so many problems. It's just repetitive stress injuries from being a baker for years and years and a oh, barista yeah. and all that. Yeah, that'll definitely do it. Um, I, I went really crazy on, like, bread making and stuff for a while, and that really did not help my wrists. Hmm. I know, and I just, like, pushed myself through it for so long that it's just, like, uh, did a lot more harm than good here. I was like, oh, I'm young. My joints will last. It's like, uh, that's not really how it works. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like, I, I really underestimated because I'm like, I'm not even 30 yet. Like, I'm still pretty young. And it's like, no, even getting into like heavy exercise now is still pretty rough. Yeah. I also feel like coming into it, I already had like, pretty um weak joints uh so like which doesn't help like i roll my ankle all the time like every few years i like get a pretty bad ankle injury <laughs> uh just from like having like loose ankles basically um, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I mean, I'm just starting to see doctors about it, so we'll see. Mm. They tell me. I hope it goes, it turns out well. You no, know, my doctor was like, or the physical therapist, because I was like, well, I rolled my ankle a while, uh, like, in June. And I was like, but that was pretty normal. I just did, like, what I always do, you know, ice and elevate and all that. And he was like, how, did you get, like, PT for that? And I was like, no. <laughs> never even thought about it yeah well that was the uh, thing um on a podcast uh someone was talking about how the the common uh advice at least in the u.s if you like break a toe is just to walk it off and uh he was like yeah i talked to a doctor and they're like that's basically because nobody has health insurance here and in reality that can mess you up so bad yeah i know i know i regret it a little bit but like it's okay. It healed pretty fast, and it actually, like, didn't hurt that bad. Uh, no. My doctor was like, if you want to get it x-rayed, we can x-ray it. But it was, like, long enough after the fact that I was like, eh, it's fine now, I guess. Yeah. Um, I have not Probably not. Probably. Any direct injuries, but, like, I have soreness to the point where I'm like, maybe, maybe I should get this checked out. I'm like lucky in that my uh, health insurance covers like quite a bit. Um, so it's weird. My health insurance plan is like a virtual plan. 
Oh. So, uh, um, there's like old, you have to have like a referral to even see your general practitioner or to see your primary care or whatever in person. So I keep having to get like referrals from her because, um, to do like for doing a bunch of exams. Literally ignoring your health for, you know, 12 years is not a good idea. It's not something I would suggest anyone do. <laughs> uh, all those weird aches and pains add up eventually. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's so easy when you don't have like any kind of health insurance or just in general, even if you do have health insurance, it's such a headache dealing with health insurance and like convincing them that you actually needed to go do the thing that you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely lucky to have a doctor who's like willing to take me seriously and wants to figure this out with me. Like doctors in the past that I went to see because I have like pretty severe IBS symptoms at least and uh they did one kind of half-assed exam and then told me that i had ibs they could put me on medication but it's probably just from stress i met my, the doctor i have now she was like we don't even actually have like definite a definitive understanding of like the role of stress on ibs so mm -hmm. and like stress and anxiety and i was like oh cool 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 <laughs> yeah i don't I don't like to be the type to be like, I don't necessarily trust doctors, but like with my, exp that's always my big problem is that like, I don't trust a lot of the doctors who my uh, insurance can afford. Cause often it feels like they don't know. I feels like they should be more concerned or like they should be doing more, but like, I don't, I haven't ever had a regular doctor. I not even, I think is like a kid. So, like, mm. if I get something checked out, it's, like, once every year or two, and then it, I never see that doctor again. Makes for a, a very yeah, totally. haphazard medical history. This is the first time, I think in high school, I had a regular doctor because I had, like, some, I was going through some, like, weird health problems, and, um, so they were doing a bunch of testing so i had a regular doctor for a few months i think but this is like the longest i've ever had like a regular regular practitioner doctor and uh it definitely makes a difference i think yeah yeah i don't know i just I, even figuring out where i can go that my insurance will cover because like last time when i talked to my insurance they said multiple times that like the place i was planning on going locally was covered and then when I got there like no nah, we've never taken that insurance and it's like well who can I trust then if literally the insurance is lying about it that's so annoying so annoying uh how frustrating oh end of the round all right. Oh, okay. Okay, so you get negative for putting... How do you get back in, like, the positive? It's uh, with the you wagers? You just have to get more points than you've spent on expeditions. Okay. That makes sense. Um, the wagers can help if you feel like you can make it into the positives. Because basically... It adds up all the points. It like it subtracts twenty, then adds in whatever you have in the column. Then whatever you have after that is multiplied by the wagers. So if at the end of that you're in the negative, that's gonna be all multiplied. Okay. Definitely get the not trusting doctors thing. Like I have a really hard time. I don't trust psychiatrists. I'm seeing a new psychiatrist on in September. I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah. Because I feel like the way that, I don't know, maybe it's just through Kaiser, but they literally, they're like mental health or behavioral health or whatever is terrible. Um, 
And I'm just gonna, yeah, say that because they, like, I, um, uh, I'll just be I, they, first time I saw, I saw a psychiatrist do them, she talked to me for one hour and diagnosed me. That and when I later came right. back and was like, I actually think that this might be what's going on. I've been doing a lot of research and blah, blah, blah. And I came in with like, for me, like I like had paperwork with me that I was just like, these are, this is the reason that I think it could be this. And she did the testing and it came out positive, like probable or whatever. And then um, she's like, but I don't feel like we should diagnose you with this. Because it's just it's like I don't understand. It's just this idea of like I was right the first time, so I'm not gonna. We're not gonna like push it. Psychology it's in like, general <laughs> is such a, a frustrating thing to me because like, no matter how how smart or empathetic or sympathetic your particular therapist is. The nature of psychology is that it says just as much about the person doing the diagnosing as it does about the actual subject of the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Because, like, it's what their mind ends up connecting it to, which would be totally different from how another psychologist would do it. There's no way that it could work without some level of objectivity, which is impossible for humans. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's... There's no way, like, especially in one hour, I feel like it should take much longer to come to any form of conclusion because there's no way to, um, you're not going to have enough context in that time to understand, like, a person's actual, like, I could tell you what I think is relevant, but it's still going to be, like, informed by the things that I know about the world and what I think, like, to some extent, like, there is, like, my my own, like, um, mental illness is kind of a drawback because I have, like, been trying to figure out what's wrong with me for so long. It's, like, I do have a kind of a large, um, uh, I, ha I know a lot of information about a lot of different mental health disorders, and that doesn't help because I, like, then, you know, we'll speak in the context of those things because I've approximated what I think is going on, even if I don't, like, fully know. And, of course, you only have the information you have at the time. Like, I'm not coming down on myself for doing that, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. It's... It's... It's it's also like I don't really understand what getting diagnosed would really help me with, because I can tell for certain that I have clinical depression, but like getting it specifically diagnosed, it's like I I it wouldn't really change anything I could do about it. I guess medication, but like I don't I I. I I don't specifically like the idea of medication, and from what I hear is, like, a lot of people who do end up on medication, like, if it doesn't work for them, it can have so many crappy side effects. Yeah, I'm really anxious about medication. I've been medicated for it before. It hasn't really done anything for me. Um, but I don't know. Like, there's... Okay. I think that there there is a diagnosis that I think would suit me. I don't want to get into it, but there's a diagnosis that I do think would suit me, and I think it would give my doctor more context for how to help me, but I don't really know how to, like, obtain that diagnosis without blatantly saying, this is what I think is going on, to the psychiatrist, and I don't feel like I have the authority to say that, and that's probably just a confidence thing, honestly. Um... I mean, also, it's like it up, a really hard diagnosis to get. Yeah, like bringing it up at least would like let them think about it. But then it's also like when self-diagnosing, I'm sure, is like a symptom for something else entirely that they might pull out of that. So it's 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 right. But like 
reality is like this thing and many things that are you know it's not necessarily to say like oh this thing is totally self-diagnosable but it's just like there are things that are self-diagnosis is seen as valid by the community of people who have it because of the um keeping that happens in psychiatry and psychology regarding those diagnoses like a way to actually like go about it um yeah so it's so complicated <laughs> yeah it's just i don't know and at the end of the day it's like uh, there are pros and cons to even having a diagnosis it's true so who knows i think always the thing that comes back to me is like living in poverty where any level of medical care whether mental or physical is like just shunned because it would be a cost that's that's my big thing is like we need to have just healthcare as a like we just need to have universal healthcare so that people can just like even if it seems small or silly like they can just go and get something checked out and just be healthy without worry of like is it going to cost me do i'm going to have to deal with this whole headache and it's just going to create a big chore for me like there's no reason right. we can't like every other country just like just like set it up so you can just go to the doctor get checked out and just like that's it you just go there and you're good or like you set up an appointment and you're good yeah and to some extent there's also just like a lot of um internalized shame around that too like i don't know i had to i like have had to go to the urgent care and i feel like i shouldn't even be there for for mental health symptoms um which is like i didn't know when i was going to the urgent care that that's what what it was but it was for anxiety basically and i felt so much shame i didn't feel like i should be there i felt like i was wasting everybody's time after they were like oh you have anxiety but it's just like at the end of the day anxiety can be just as dangerous as like anything else yeah um depending on how it's exploited but like mental health especially is not treated like something to be taken seriously in that context um, i mean any health problems like it's um a, a lot of things people have been saying from you know the physical disability community is like it's treated just as much like they're faking just as much like it's it's not a serious oh, yeah. issue yeah, yeah. and it's like in general if something is not physically apparent people just don't want to believe it people i feel like and it, it's become more apparent over the last year i feel like most people understand that germs are a thing but deep down don't fully believe they're real mm -hmm. like with the 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 like the shocking amount of people we found out either didn't wash their hands at all or didn't wash them correctly and like all of that stuff it's like it's it's so simple to deal with but people like on a on a subconscious level they're like I'm not going to get sick and it's like you are probably though so like like uh, uh, excuse me it's the confidence with which and that's yeah i think like that is the attitude that we kind of feel like to whatever extent we have have to adopt like i don't know it's so weird it's weird to me even that i like am now so aware of how easily i can get sick because i remember i had like real well the i sprained my ankle like so bad it was swollen for like two months in like 2016 or 2015 and it took me a month to go to the doctor about it um because so i was like it's not that bad i've sprained my ankle before i didn't have to go to the doctor um and then it turned out it could have been really bad it wasn't luckily they did the x-ray and it was okay but they were like you need to do this but i did not want to go to the doctor um at the time i didn't have health insurance either so i had to like drive an hour and a half to go to a free clinic on like a wednesday after work but then also, I had food poisoning that year. 
so bad that I was like, I couldn't eat anything and blah, blah, blah for a week, a week. And Lon uh, had to, was like begging me to go to the doctor because I couldn't hold down any liquids or anything. I just slept for a week straight and I refused. I wouldn't go. Um, which is so wild to me now because I think that even if I ha had that for like one day, I would be like, I gotta go. I gotta go to the hospital right now. I'm dying. Like, yeah, I don't think I could handle it now. But I mean, then I was like, no, I will not go. The the interesting thing I've noticed is um, uh, Corey's son, because he has insurance through Corey, who's in the military, he's in the Navy, never has to worry about any of that stuff. If he's sick or anything where it might be serious, he just can go. He broke his finger uh, playing basketball and just, like, had no issues. And then more recently, he, like, ran into a countertop, had a concussion, and had to get, like... um staples like a couple staples and like he there was no issue at all because it's just all going to be covered by insurance um and it's like it's just so interesting because like me coco cory all three of us grew up poor so the idea a mm -hmm. of not having to worry about medical care and b um the way he treats food is like so alien to all of us he just will not eat leftovers because the, the they've dropped just that tiniest bit in quality, and he's so used to just, like, getting great food all of the time. Because he's, like, you know, not, like, rich or well-off or anything, but it's like he's never had food insecurity or, like, health insecurity um, so mm. far in his life. He's only eight, but it's, like, it's, it's really interesting to see um, a kid with, like, those privileges and just how how differently he treats the world than I would have at that age. It's really fascinating. I don't know. I've, like, always been kind of weird about food, but not in, like... Like, I would still eat it. Actually, I'm, like, weirder about it now than I probably ever have been, and it is probably because I know that I can, like, feed myself. Um, or that I, like, have the money to replace something if it goes bad, and I'm not, like, rushing to, like, eat everything in my fridge. Yeah. But, um... This food spoiling is always a huge anxiety to me. Because, like, I don't know, I have this... I have this general anxiety over, like, um, just, like, food safety and cleanliness in general. Uh, just yeah, after after too. living in places <laughs> where, like food would go bad or like you know places would get moldy i've lived in so many places with mold at this point that i'm like so anxious about like mildew and moisture and just like making sure that everything is like dried out correctly and it's 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 oh yeah it's i don't know i, I i'm probably over paranoid about it but it's also like i don't want to go through that ever again Yeah, and that's totally understandable. I'm, like, afraid of getting food poisoning now because I, like, get it so easily and I have a lot of, like, I'm just, I have a hard time with food. Um, so, I mean, like, but then you, I, I, but even then it's, like, I find workarounds, like, I buy my food mostly frozen now because that's, like, I just freeze everything because it'll guarantee it's not going to go bad. I don't, I try, I like do buy a little bit of fresh produce, but certainly not like as much as I used to, because I can't, I just like, if something like I can't, I won't eat like wilted lettuce. I won't eat like, there's so many things that I just like really freaks me out. <laughs> I just, I'm, so. I'm on the fence about wilted lettuce. Like I don't mind it. But also, it is spoiled, right? Like, it's probably not healthy to eat overly wilted lettuce. No, I mean, I think that there's definitely a line. I don't think, like, you're going to get that. S like, it depends, obviously, how wilted it is. A little wilting, I think, is fine. Or if you have, like, a bag of lettuce or whatever, and some of it's not good. Like, you could just pick it out, and I think that's fine. It's not, like, really, like, molded or anything. I don't but, know. Um, it's, yeah, I'm... I'm... I'm not but certain. I don't like it at all. I I don't even like to eat like I I go through periods of time in my life where I won't even eat salads with uh 
salad dressing on them because I don't like soggy lettuce. So it's also just like a texture thing for me. Yeah. Really freaks me out. <laughs> I mean, my big thing with uh with uh salads and such is just um it's the uh it just takes so long to eat like a salad. You know? It's it's a very yeah, that's real. It's a very slow to eat. even if it's not a very large salad, it's just like you don't get very much of it on any specific biteful. And like I've, I've, uh, I think there's always a point about 80% through a salad where I'm like I'm just exhausted and <laughs> just like like actively picking up a forkful at a time of this. I'm 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 ready to be done with it. Right. Also, the older that I get, um, my TMJ has just gotten so bad in the last few years um, that I like really can't eat anything super crunchy or like chewy or it hurts. Like it'll hurt for hours after I eat mm. or it just like sits in my jaw. It'll hurt the back of my head. Like it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, there's some things where like I've most things I'm OK with. But if it's something where it's like especially chewy and it's not like a, a something small like a little candy or something where it's gonna like last for a while my jaw gets really like locked up mm -hmm. um ah uh, tmj is terrible it's like they told me the last time i was at the the dentist. Well, they wanted to give me a night guard, but I, it's not covered by my insurance, and I just didn't have five hundred dollars to drop on it at the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, told me that I sh they wanted to refer me to a TMJ specialist, but again, again, it's not covered by my insurance. So I didn't do it. Um, it's frustrating because it would be nice to like, I don't know. There's like physical therapy and stuff you can do for it. Right. I do a little bit and I like to massage it, but it's so bad now. It's like I can't even open my mouth without it like clicking and popping. Oof. Yeah, that sounds really rough. Yeah, apparently it's um probably from my like it was probably already present but probably ex really exacerbated by um braces. They had um Braces for so long. Mm, yeah. They did like a lot of like spreading of my jaw and they uh, pulled so many teeth and stuff. Dental work can really mess up your. Yeah. I, I only ever had the spacer, but like I can tell like my teeth are not in. They, they look very straight from the front, but like going back, it's like they like try and curve in because I had the maximal occlusion right and so they're like going back s straight and then they curve way out at the molars because i had the spacer back there mm. that like spread them out more um yeah i had the spacer too i had two of them actually they did it to me twice same although the thing i remember my first spacer um i would always pick at it because like uh, obviously I was a nervous kid um, and like you, how could you not uh, but like I was at a movie mm. with uh, Grandma Judy and like it like popped off my teeth which I found out later was <laughs> supposed to happen because um, I'd already really? had it for quite a while and uh, we didn't know that and we were with like a different dentist at that point so we went there and they were like I don't know I guess put another one on so I just had one for twice as I had two for twice as long when I probably only needed the first one. Uh, yeah, I had um, well, I had one when I was in like elementary school, and then before they put my braces on, which like I had for however long you're supposed to have them or whatever, and then when they put my braces on, um, I had another one before they could put the top braces on. And that one was really wild. Like, it, there was, like, a tooth worth of space between my two front teeth. Oh, I think geez. it was actually, like, technically an expander or something. It was, like, heavier hardware than just a spacer. Yeah. It was really intense. 
Yeah, I I was fortunate enough not to have too much of all of that, but um I don't know. I I think I just generally am pretty lucky with my teeth, like even though I hadn't been to a dentist in like years and years, the last time I went, um they were like no, you don't have any ca- except for your wisdom teeth, which yeah, I've been told for quite a while that I need to get my wisdom teeth out. Um but again, I don't want to deal with insurance for all of that. But uh, yeah, all my other teeth are just fine, and I only brush once a day in the morning. So, oh, wow, I just had to do, just had to get a bunch of fillings. It was really bad. I've never I had a panic attack in the chair, which was wild because I'd had so much dental work. I just assumed I would be fine, but it was yeah, it was not good. Um, but uh. They put this like thing in my mouth, which I'd never had before. That's like supposed to keep the um, water from pooling in at like the top of your throat. But like having that thing in my mouth was just too much, I guess. I don't know. Cause it's like blowing air. So there's like a lot of noise. It's supposed to be so they don't have to manually have like the suction going all the time. Um, Weird. And I, they had to take it out and just do it manually because I couldn't have the thing in my mouth. And then even after that, it was like I was so panicked. I, it was terrible. It was really bad. But um, I think I had to have like they did four fillings. Um, which like considering I hadn't been to the dentist for any kind of like dental work in a long time, that was probably the accurate um but now i'm like pretty i like brush twice a day i floss once a day i use a a mouth an antiseptic mouthwash like i am really intense about my dental hygiene now but it's like i don't want to have to pay for like dental work or have i don't know i've had like also i had an abscess off of one of my wisdom teeth that they had to like pull in an emergency surgery and that was like super intense and traumatizing for me so i just like avoid I would like to avoid any kind of mental issues. Yeah. I just, I I really need to get my wisdom teeth dealt with, but it's like also now with like the pandemic and everything, it's like yeah. dental stuff is going to be difficult and then um yeah, I just I don't want to deal with insurance having to call and see like what surgery I can get and find out if I can even like you know, what garbage level of anesthesia they'll be paying for um Mm -hmm. like the ideal would be to just like get put under but like the likelihood they'll pay for that is pretty low yeah if you're getting all of them pulled like they only did the like minimum for my when they pulled that wisdom tooth they did not put me under or anything it was really intense though the whole situation (laughs) yeah i mean i've had a tooth extracted before but i I assume it's got to be way more intense considering like how far back it has to be yeah absolutely and yeah yeah like it's like Things like dry socket are much harder to avoid or to avoid but you have to be more careful about it yeah i mean that's the thing is like when i went to the dentist last like they showed me with the mirror and everything like one of my de- wisdom teeth is like m- pretty much mostly decay on top uh the other one has like a lot of cavities you know it's like that i don't feel any discomfort from them but mm. they are definitely like just absolutely done for. Yeah. Ugh, I'm sorry. I also, like, just generally have, like, a lot of mouth pain, and, like, I get canker sores all the time, which is Same. probably just stress and hormone-related. Yeah, the canker sores. That's, you also that's get a bunch of canker sores? Stress. Yeah! Brooke gets bad canker sores, too. I just, like, found out because I've always had them, and I didn't know that it wasn't, like, necessarily a common thing. Um, no, it's actually but, way yeah, more common. yeah, I guess it's common, just a thing in our family. It's a way more common thing to have um, herpes sores in your mouth. 
But like canker sores are not, I believe, a part of the herpes complex. Which already, no, I feel like the, never... I feel like the stigma around that is also pretty like overstated. Everybody freaks out like her. It's an STI. It's herpes. It's like no, it's not an issue, guys. Eighty percent of people already have it. So the likelihood is you already mm. probably had it if you've had more than like three partners, even just like with casual contact. Yeah, yeah. Cold sores are like super, super. Mm -hmm. I think cold sores are like much, much more common than. Yeah, and that is that sores. that is herpes is the cold sores, and a lot of people don't want mm -hmm. to admit that because again they want to label it as this like sexual infection and it's like it doesn't necessarily have to be most people just get it from someone in their family when they're a kid and they're just like just like general just like salival contact mm -hmm. we get the h we have the wart thing though that's a yes. thing. yeah which is actually like a much more concerning even though people don't care as much although i haven't had any kind of wart since i was like six or not six, a uh, sixth grade. I have, I used to have like at least one on my hands always, but I don't have any now. I, get, I don't know. I get like skin tags on my eyelids a lot. Like on the outside, I'll usually have at least one, but they're like really yeah, small. Yeah, I have like little like deposits. I don't know that those are warts though. I've read that there's like, there's like cholesterol deposits or something too i don't know it's confusing i'm not yeah i'm not could be certain. anything um i i don't know it's really weird so i mean the other thing about canker sores is that they can be caused by so many things there's like stress just biting your lips like i feel like my mouth is like always at some level of like swollen it feels like anyway but i don't know i recently learned that like i have a really fat tongue which is interesting i also have like fissures in my tongue now that i don't think that i had when i was younger um there's like scalloping on the side of it that happens just because my tongue is like too fat <laughs> oh yeah same yeah it's like i have a really big oh. mouth but then i also like my tongue is really huge um which is why I can't roll my R's at all. I've tried yeah. so many times. But it's like, no, my tongue is just too thick. It will not, like, do the proper motion. Like, mm -hmm. I've tried. It would it would help me in my, my like, my career to be able to roll my tongue. Uh, but I cannot do it as far as I can tell. Um, so I have to, like, fake it with, like, a, a glottal, like, kind of noise. Oh, I can't roll my tongue either. It's very annoying. Yeah, it. W I wish I could. I mean, there's so many different little like vocal sounds I wish I could make that are just like either take practice or it's like something like that where just I'm not genetically predisposed to being able to do it. I was getting like I had like a massive canker sore like sores on the side of my because I like kept biting it on accident and then I kept biting it. It was so painful. I don't think I've ever had so much mouth pain as I did when that was happening. God, that's and then the it's, worst. Like, I just had to eat like, on the other side and yeah, like but any time I like end up biting my cheek or something, I end up like biting over. It. Oh, you won. Yes. Oh, I kept it's ending really every like round with, like, like two points in the positive, but you were able to end that with the four more than me. Ah! That was a really close one. really liked that game. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I like this game a lot. Like I said, it's it's Knizia. He's one of the biggest guys. Uh, the other one, the other designer that I wish I could uh, find more of his work online is uh, Friedman Fries. <laughs> His whole thing is like all of his games, uh, the name starts with F, um, usually two words that start with F, 
and they always have uh, boxes that match his green hair. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, he and Knizzi are like two of the, the best designers. Um, and then who else is pretty good? Uwe Rosenberg is pretty good. I think that one of his just got put onto here. My personal favorite is always going to be Cole Worley, who did uh, Root. Yeah, I like Root a lot. Root is really good. Um, I wish I could bring Oath next time I come, but it's huge. It's like it's like oh. a Monopoly size box that's like way thicker and like way heavier. It's like packed. The like board is like this huge like like uh like three foot rollout like neoprene mat like a mouse pad. That's annoying. Oh, it's so cool though. It's like it is my favorite game by like a long shot. It's so good, but it's like yeah, it's not very portable, especially if I'm going to be coming by plane. Um yeah. I know. I would like to move back to the Northwest at some point cuz like I I have a yeah! a pretty good situation here, but like I just cannot stand the weather. I mean n- none of the three of us can. Corey desperately when he retires, which Will hopefully be in just a few years with how the military works um desperately wants to move further north uh maybe not as far as that but like definitely not not georgia uh where oh yeah i was gonna look up if they have gin rummy on here let's see let's see if they have gin rummy mm. come on let me do the thing gin they do not they have some sort of rummy. Mm. Uh, hmm. Complexity? No, that's not what I want. Games by theme, maybe. Games by. Do you no. use anything for your? Um, I mean, I could play another round of that if you wanted to do. Uh, do you use anything for your uh canker source? No, I mean, sometimes I'll put, like, some Burt's Bees lip balm if they're, like, really annoying me, but, like, for the most part, they, I just leave them be. I just started, because this last one I had was really bad. It was just, like, in uh, on my top lip, like, in front of my tooth, so, like, I was having a really hard time eating. Um, I, so I, like, Googled it. I started doing salt washes after I ate, and also, um... There's an or Origel makes an antiseptic mouthwash specifically for mouth sores. And I felt like it really helped. Like hmm. at least for pain management. If you have one that's like making it difficult to eat, I feel like that was like I feel like it really helped. It also felt okay. like it healed faster, but I don't know. It has um hydrogen peroxide in it. So Oh, okay. Um yeah. I was also reading that they can be caused or worsened by using um, toothpaste with sodium lauryl sulfate in it. Uh, so I just started using this like Burt's Bees toothpaste. I oh, think that yeah. might be helping too. I've been, I used to use the like tooth tabs that you like crunch up, um, but I got them from Lush and Lush was some real shitheads and supported the police in all of the riots. Uh, mm-hmm. So do not use them anymore. Um, but then I switched over to uh, just Tom's of Maine, like Grandma used to get. Yeah. Which is, I, I realized the reason she got it is because it is specifically fluoride-free. But, I mean, it's it works out. I don't like Tom's of Maine. Um, and I like having a fluoride toothpaste. I, I drink a lot of, like, I don't get fluoride from the water because I mostly drink um, bottled water. Because I'm paranoid, but uh, I yeah we do the the tap bar here is disgusting. So I I tried filtering it for like a while. I like du- I would like double filter it. I would filter it through a sink filter, then through like a pitcher filter, and then I would put it into a bottle that had its own filter. And it's still it's just there's so much like sulfur in it. Oh god. Really well, awful. we also had like a really weird relationship with water growing up. Um that I feel like 
I don't know. I feel like that really informed the way that I like approach it now in my adulthood. So yeah. I just get weird about hot water. I mean, I yeah, Always. we do. Um, we have a water cooler, so we just do that. Uh, which overall, oh, it's like nice. it's way less wasteful than bottled water was the big thing because like we reuse the bottles that we have and it's like way cheaper too because like five gallons is like a dollar 85 all right let's mm-hmm. do i have it set up for just a single round this time um because i i should probably oh, okay. go make dinner and i got a, a an errand or so to run um but we can totally finish off with this Uh oh shoot. What do I want to do? Uh that'd be risky. Uh eh, let's go for this. Oh, this is a rough hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna see if Dad'll be up for being on stream next week and or Satch. Um I I planned to this week, but I just, like, every time I was like, I should message them, something came up with, like, work or whatever, and I forgot. <laughs> so, like, every few hours I was just like, oh, yeah, I should message. Oh, wait, what's, what do I get? Okay. And then... This is the reason that it literally took me until last night to message you about today. I was like, oh, yeah, we were talking about doing that. Um, yeah. Or, like, yeah. solidified. But, um, that's camping, right? now so i don't oh. think that he would have played although he did play that one time when he was camping that was fun yeah with like modern technology it's not too difficult especially because like board game arena is on um is like on mobile or like if i did the the webcam that'd be even easier because you just have to watch that and like talk um Hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to see about it. Scheduling and stuff. Ugh. I haven't. Yeah, I've been really just like so so busy with work. I've been like putting piano practice to the side. I already skipped like a couple days this week. So that's I don't. I don't like to do that. Um. And, uh, yeah, like, at the gym, just mainly because of the heat, walking there is, like, it's it's tolerable, but it's, like, it's so much less tolerable when I have to get up, like, really early to try and, like, get up before the sun so that it's not that hot, and it's, like, I'm so tired, I don't want to, like, get up and rush to get ready so that I can get out at a decent time. Ugh. Yeah, that sounds really miserable. I mean, it's it's presumably worth it. I do I do like being able to use like proper equipment rather than whatever like junk. I had I just had like two five pound dumbbells, which um did something, but like was not I was not really gaining any kind of bulk at a certain point. I plateaued real hard. Yeah, I have three sets of dumbbells. Um, my heaviest are only 10 pounds, so then I would, like, double them up and do pretty dangerous things, to be honest. But um, I just didn't want to go to a gym. Although I just met somebody who uh, has a home gym, and uh, he invited me to come over and... That would be the ideal. Yeah, we don't have any kind Mm -hmm. of space for it, unfortunately. No, me either. Not even a little bit. I don't have any studio. (sighs) I don't know. It's all. I already get so much like utility out of my room. It's like a nine by. 9 by 10 or 8 by 9 I don't remember it's not a very large room 
but I'm able to just through like very careful planning and like being consistently tidy. Like I, I cannot afford to be any kind of messy because I would immediately run out of space. Um, I'm able to use it as yeah. like a studio and like a practice space and a recording space and everything. And also still like sleep, you know, because I have a, I have like a, um, like a fold up, uh, bed basically. It's, it's basically like a Jacob's oh, ladder, nice. but it's just made out mm -hmm. of like bed foam. Interesting. Yeah. It was like, I know I need to bucks on at, uh, at Ikea, I think. I'd like to get like a proper like oh. folding frame kind of bed, but like that's they're they're expensive. Mattresses are so expensive. I never really had a bed after moving out of like moving out after high school, so like I never realized just how expensive mattresses are. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I uh, just had to buy a new mattress. And um, I ended up getting a cheap one, which is like honestly like pretty dangerous because it's made of there's like fucking fiberglass in it. Ooh. But... No, it stressed me out. But then I read all about it online, and I, they're like, if you put a mattress cover on it, you're probably solid. And I was like, okay, I'll do mm, that then. Yeah. But it still stresses me out. I still think about it all the time. Um, but that's like apparently the cheap alternative to. Uh, make it like fire resistant because it has to be in order to sell in the United States. Um, that makes sense, yeah. Uh, which I mean, it was fascinating to learn about, but also I was just like, oh, this is scary. Um, That's really scary. I'm yeah. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for. Um, I'm moving. I just got a. Uh, approve. I think I'm moving. I'm like wait, waiting still to hear back from my new roommates. Roommate situation that I feel really good about. And uh, the bedroom is tiny, but I don't like. I'm hoping not to spend a ton of time in the bedroom, because um, that's kind of the point of why I wanted to move in with roommates. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's always that was always the ideal to me. Like, is basically like you get a place with like several people that you actually know, and it basically is just like a hangout slash live there situation. Or like, it, I always yeah. wanted to like basically rent a house with a bunch of friends, but I just never had enough friends who I could trust financially to do that. Hmm. Um, I don't actually know the people that I'm moving in with. I got really good vibes from the interview that we did, but um, yeah, mostly just to like have other people around me, period, um, feels a lot more, I don't know. Like, it's not even that I necessarily need to like socialize with them. But just like the the living space is big enough that it's like I feel like we could comfortably occupy the same space and not be in each other's like feel like we have to uh lies, but also that like the opportunity is there if we want to. But just having the presence of other people. Yeah. Yeah. After being alone for two years in my apartment, I've had the idea of being around other people. Yeah, that's always my thing is, like, I, I lived in so many different house shares where I just rent a room with people I didn't know. And, like, I always, I never necessarily felt like people were unfriendly or that I couldn't socialize with them. It's just I never was in a position where I could take the time to socialize and, like, get to know my roommates. So it always just felt kind of awkward. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think this is... Well, actually, I can do that first. Then, no. I know, I'm in, like, a weird position right now. I know, you're winning by, like, a good good amount, though, and it, the deck's getting pretty low, so... No, but I'm gonna do something maybe a little dumb here. We'll see. It's probably not. It's probably a good idea. Okay, okay. 
if you trust yourself. Do I wanna no, I'm just gonna do this. Mm. Okay. Okay, I gotta I gotta make the move. Think kind of I don't know. It's fun because it, you like you go up and down so much it's so hard to tell like what's going to happen. Yeah, the there's end. like a lot of risk reward to it where it's like just putting down any particular color. It's like, well, now you're going to lose points, but then if you get just right, you can just barely eke out a positive number. I think that's very clever because, like, there there aren't a lot of games that lose. utilize yeah. um, paying for points, you know? Hey, I won! Mm, yeah. By six. Yeah, yay! Um, that was really fun. But, uh, yeah, it's like, most of the times it's like if they subtract points, it's as a penalty for doing something else. But, like, having it where it's, like, just to try and earn points, you have to spend points you don't have and go into debt. That is really mm -hmm. clever. There's another game, kind of tangentially, that's also about going on expeditions where the idea is that um, you're basically going on expeditions around the world, but the, the cool aspect is uh, how turn order works is based on this calendar around the board, and it's basically like whoever is furthest back in the calendar, they go, and as soon as they pass somebody else that person takes their turn. So it's like showing basically like you're not necessarily taking turns in like uh just like this is what I do, this is what I do. It's like, no, this is what I did at this point on the calendar. And so whoever is furthest back is basically just recounting how their expedition already went. Mm. That's a really cool mechanic. And it's also, it's between that and it's also like when you do the exp expedition it's like a bag of tiles and like a bunch of the tiles are just dirt and then some of them are like treasures or artifacts. So you like just like get based on how you did, you get to pull a certain amount. And so you might just get total junk or you might get all awesome stuff. Oh. I forget what it's called. It's something generic like expeditions around the world. But that one I got to track down because it sounds super fun. Very interesting. All right. Well, yeah, thanks. I'd be curious. Thanks for joining me for the stream and for games. Yeah, anytime. Well, any Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Thankfully, my, my schedule is pretty flexible, but uh, yeah, Saturdays are usually better if just because uh, rarely do the freelancing sites I work for do anything on, on Saturday or Sunday. There'll be like a couple of things versus the like. Was it like 20 I did on Monday? Ugh. Like good money, but then also like, ugh, it's, it's, I'm just busy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, I am, I'm going to do my outro and because I got to, I got to run to do dinner and stuff. I'll have to say goodbye now, but I'll, I'll talk to you next Saturday. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, around the same time works for me, but I'm sure we'll talk before then. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. Have a good rest of your Saturday. Yeah. You, you too. Have a good dinner. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. All right. And that'll do it for the stream as well. Let me let me zoom in here. Whoop. Nope. Hold on. I got it. <laughs> my camera, for whatever reason, my camera, Uh, I think it's because I, I unplugged it between streams. There we go. Hi. I look kind of a mess. I need to shave. And, like, I have my hair tied back where I usually look it down. Whatever. Thank you very much for inviting me into your home, your computer, your laptop, your tablet, your gaming console, your Roku, your Apple TV, however it is you watch today. I hope I brought some entertainment and levity into your life. Also, thank you, Lunar IPv4, for following. I did notice when you did that. I just, uh, unfortunately, in the flow of conversation with someone else, it's kind of tricky to, to bring out one of those thank yous. But thank you for following. Um, hope you enjoy you know, what future streams I have coming. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to play more Link's Awakening, hopefully more high energy this time. I, I'm 
uh, a little embarrassed at just how like low energy that was, but you know, when you have depression, sometimes, sometimes you gotta, you can't like be on and have all the energy you'd like in a performance. I will, I will do my best, but you know, I, I appreciate anybody who did watch. You know, tuning in. That'll be tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Be sure to follow, subscribe, use your Twitch Prime sub, which if you have Amazon Prime, just connect the two accounts and you get a free subscription every month. Appreciate if you consider using that for me. Uh, follow me on Twitter at IggyDKid. Follow me on YouTube, Iggy and the Ape. And check out my Twitch archive YouTube channel. That and my personal YouTube are linked down below. On the browser version, you can uh, see all of my past streams. Or you can just look up Iggy Kid Twitch Archive. That's three words, Iggy Kid Twitch Archive. Uh, yeah. So with all that said, thanks again for watching, whether it's in the past, the present, or the future with the past broadcast tab and the uh, Twitch archive. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you'll join me for the next stream. And hey, if nobody else has told you this, I'll t I keep looking at myself rather than at the camera. Sorry. Uh, if nobody else has told you this, I will tell you this. You're a good kid. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's see if there's anybody to rage you all over to. Looks like there's some folks streaming, so uh, I'm just going to go to AFK. There we go, so you guys can still hear me, but uh, you don't need to to see me for this bit. I'm just going to find someone who is currently streaming to raid over to. Just got to wait for the Twitch app to load. Come on now. Uh, the Life of Sean or Dr. Blue Jay. Uh, the Life of Sean's doing backyard wrestling. That sounds fun. So I will I will raid you guys over to The Life of Sean playing backyard wrestling which I think was the game ICP was in, because they were like backyard wrestlers, that's how they met. I don't know. I've, I'm not going to talk at school on that, so... Slash raid the life of Sean. Oh, come on. Let me, let me do it. There we go. All right, tell him I sent you. Have a good weekend, everybody. Goodbye. Good night. Goodbye.